Welcome back. Our entrepreneurial series introduces young Lebanese entrepreneurs in various industries who are attempting to make Lebanon the country where you can succeed in your business. Our guest today is CEO and co-founder of the Alleyway Group, Ziad Kamel, who is sitting with our own Yumna Nofal. Yumna? Thank you, Noor. Yes, Ziad Kamel is in our studio today, and Ziad is also treasurer of the syndicate of owners of restaurants, cafes, nightclubs, and pastries in Lebanon since 2010. But that, it didn't begin that way. He began working for advertising agency Leo Burnett back in 2003. So how did you go from working in advertising to becoming an entrepreneur? Hi, Yumna. Hi. <laughs> nice to see you again. Um, I came back from after doing my master's in London and swiftly got a job in advertising. Uh, Leo Burnett and advertising in general is a great way to apply your creative skills and your project management skills. Uh, so it was the perfect match for what I wanted to do. Uh, however, my dream was always uh, to set my own thing up. I didn't know what I would do at the time, but it soon became apparent after uh, four years uh, at Leo Burnett. And the transition was smooth. Uh, I set up my own business starting in 2005. And what was the business that you set up? Uh, the business was in uh, food and beverage in Lebanon. We had the vision to develop several concepts in Lebanon, starting with the Gauche Caviar and Cloud9, uh, and extending down the alleyway, which you know of, uh, to Couclet, our French bistro, a tanning salon, and today we are present in Zaytuna Bay with Amar, and we're expanding Couclet to Dubai and hopefully internationally too. So you started off with a vision for food and beverage. Is there a reason you chose food and beverage? Do you think it works better in Lebanon than other kinds of industries? I basically wanted to make people happy with what I did. Okay. And, and you did. I think you succeeded yeah. <laughs> in doing that. Th this was a sort of a prime driving force to why uh, food and beverage uh, was finally selected. While at Leo Burnett, I had the chance to organize uh, 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 several large parties in the famous Thursa Palace in Ashafi with my business partner, Paddy Cochran. And uh, after the second successful party and the happiness it brought hundreds of people, we, we knew this is what we had to do. Okay, so we know that what you guys do is you bank on people's happiness. And That's correct. God knows the Lebanese love <laughs> to be happy and entertained. However, in the last few months, many businesses, particularly restaurants, have been forced to close down during the last six months of the year because a lot of Arab tourists and a lot of the usual busyness that they get has been dwindling. And a lot of the GCC countries have been warning their citizens not to come to Lebanon. So how have you managed to survive through this turmoil? Lebanon is always, has always been in a state of turmoil for as long as I can remember. Um, my first business, Gosh Caviar, opened up on July 8, 2006, which was four days uh, before the Israeli war in Lebanon. So, you have a little bit of a, you have yeah. a little bit of experience in <laughs> terms of surviving. It, it was very, very tough. I mean, you can imagine any uh, new businessman, any aspiring entrepreneur, works for a year, year and a half, uh, securing the funds and 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 going through with his plan, and all of a sudden something totally outside of his control happens, such as a war. Uh, after four days of uh, operating your business, you have to shut down and leave the country and then right. make the decision to come back and invest. But you've stayed and you've remained here and your businesses are still open. Your restaurants are still doing well, some of the best in the country. So yeah. what has been your survival mechanism? I guess uh, I mentioned uh, the war in 2006 because that is the, the symbolism of rock bottom. When you feel, when you, when you feel that you have nothing else anymore that the country is just really disintegrating in front of your very, very eyes and then you come back and you do it again and, and you succeed in doing it uh, you kind of know what rock bottom is and, and you become optimistic and hopeful uh, so we went through some very difficult times from 2000 you know we established our company in 2005 and in, in around January we all know what happened in February with the assassination of former Prime Minister Rafil Hariri and so since, to, since the birth of, of my group of companies, there has been turmoil in Lebanon. But that didn't keep us from uh, keeping our eye on the goal, uh, from making people happy, from investing more in our own country, 
too many Lebanese today who are educated and, and have a good uh, intellect on them are leaving the country. Um, I decided to stay here. Some might think it was a good decision. Some might disagree with me. I think uh, no, but I think most of them would be, since you are, your businesses are thriving today, and we're going to talk about the effect that expats and yeah. expatriates have on the businesses. And I want you to say a few words about that. But I think most people would agree that because your businesses are doing well and you've survived these ups and downs, that it was a good decision to stay. So what, is you, what would your advice be for aspiring entrepreneurs, people who are coming to invest in Lebanon? Because a lot of people are scared of that. Yeah. In retrospect, it was a good decision. However, uh, I always do think that if I did the same thing in a stable country, what would have happened? But there's no such thing as a perfect environment to do business in. Uh, so you, one has to believe that. You have to really believe that. There are always crises, whether it's financial or whether it's geological with hurricanes and, and what have you. Uh, there are always barriers to do business. You just have to apply yourself to the fullest, focus on the good things, and the good things will happen. And like you were saying earlier, 2012, a very tough year, even tougher than uh, 2006 when we saw the July War economically. Uh, we didn't have a travel ban on GCC nationals back then. In 2012, starting on May, in May, we had a travel ban which saw a huge drop in tourism revenue, direct and indirect, which affected our uh, sector the most. Hotels uh, have, have recorded uh, very low uh, capacity numbers. Yeah, supposedly hotel occupancy only approved during the last days of December, and that's probably due to the holidays. That's right, thanks right. to the Lebanese expats. And, and to get back to you on the Lebanese expat, without Leb the Lebanese expat, uh, Lebanon would be in a very tough situation. Uh, as you saw during the, the, the holiday season at the end of December, um, there was a, a jolt in the economy, certainly in the tourism sector with all the New Year's Eve parties and the restaurants and, and the, the nightlife. Uh, you know, it was very much needed. So, you know, we have the Lebanese expat.